Welcome back. Today I am going to discuss the chapter The Making of a Scientist by Robert W. Peterson. It's going to be a quick revision, just what you need to know before the exam. Now before that, Richard Epp Wright has received the Searle Scholar Award and the Shering Plow Award for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. It was his fascination for butterflies that opened the world of science to him. So let's see how butterflies open the world of science to him. Let's get started. Now, page number 32 of your book, first, these three questions will be answered. Now, what was Richard Ebright able to achieve at the age of 22, which excited the scientific world? Then what was his childhood like and what drew Ebright's interest in collecting things? So now the chapter begins by telling us, giving us the information that at the age of 22, Richard Ebright presented a new theory on how cells work. So this article was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. So this was a very huge achievement for him. Now, details of this I'll be discussing in the answer. So after that, they tell us about his childhood. So Ebright, he grew up north of Reading, Pennsylvania. He was the only child of the single mother. And since he did not have any playmates around him, he started collecting things. So that began in kindergarten. He collected rocks, fossils and coins. And he also had interest in astronomy. Sometimes he would just lie down at night and gaze at the sky. Now the detail of the questions. So first question, what was Richard Ebright able to achieve at the age of 22, which excited the scientific world? Now at the age of 22, Richard excited the scientific world with a theory, with a new theory on how cells work. This is important. So Richard H. Ebright and his college roommate James R. Wong explained the theory in an article in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. So they explained their theory in detail, which was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. This article, it was based on one of the biology's puzzles, how the cell can read the blueprint of its DNA. So it was for the first time that this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students. So when actually Richard came with this theory, he was a college student. So therefore, it makes it a very big achievement. Now, these two questions I'll be answering together. What was his childhood like and what drew a bright interest in collecting things? So Richard grew up in North of Reading, Pennsylvania. There was nothing much that he could do there. He didn't even have any playmates with whom he could play football or baseball. He therefore developed an interest in collecting things. He would collect rocks, fossils and coins. He became an eager astronomer too and sometimes stargazing all night. Since his father died early when he was in third grade, he was raised by a single mother. His mother was his only companion till he started school. So this is about his childhood. Now on page number 33, we are told that he is intelligent and curious and he had an encouraging mother who encouraged his interest in learning. Now the role of mother is also very important. So this is the answer if such a question comes. So Richard's mother was his only companion until he started school. She was a very encouraging mother and who would encourage and in sorry who encouraged his interest in learning she took him on trips bought him telescopes microscopes cameras mounting materials and other equipment and helped him in many other ways she took care of richard's overall development she invited his friends home and at night both mother and son spent time together at the dining room table doing things she used to feed his curiosity by finding new things for him to learn. Richard was her whole life after the death of his father when Richard was in third grade. So this is the role of the mother. So throughout, mother took care of Richard and brought him things so that his curiosity or he his keen interest in science and other things developed. Now, by the time he was in second grade, Ebb Wright had collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown. So since he was a very keen collector, he had collected all the 25 species of butterflies that were found around his hometown. Now, when he had collected all of them, so this could have been the end of his butterfly collecting interest. But then came the turning point. So then mother bought him a children's book called The Travels of Monarch X. So Monarch X, it is the name of a butterfly. So this opened the world of science to the eager young collector. So here comes the question. So how the, how the book The Travels of Monarch X proved to be the turning point in Ebright's life? Now this is the answer. So by the time he was in second grade, Ebright had collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown. So therefore 
He lost interest in it. But then his mother bought him this wonderful book, The Travels of Monarch X. It was about the migration of butterflies. This research was still under study. So the readers of the book, they were invited to be a part of the research by tagging the butterflies. So this opened the world of science to him. So how this book proved to be a turning point. So this is what you have to write. So book usne jab padhi, so book ke end mein, there was an invitation for the readers. So readers, they were invited ki agar unne interest hai, so they can be the part of the research. So upright, he did the same. So next is his butterfly tagging experience. So this is again an important question. So let's read. At the end of the book, The Travels of Monarch, the readers, they were invited to tag butterflies for research by Dr. Frederick A. Arkhart. Anyone who found a tagged butterfly was to send the tag to Dr. Arkhart. So Richard also started tagging these butterflies after Richard's mother wrote to Dr. Arkhart. So Richard's mother wrote to this Dr. Arkhart and he got the permission to tag butterflies for him. So now, what happened there now? The butterfly collecting season around reading, it lasts six weeks in late summer. So if you were to chase them one by one and tag them, then you won't catch many. So now since you have to tag a butterfly, that means ki butterfly ko pehle pakarna padega aur fir se tag karna padega. So butterfly ke piche piche bhaagne se you cannot tag enough butterflies. So what he decided? So he decided to raise a flock of butterflies. Now this again can come as a question why he decided to raise a flock of butterflies or how his basement became the, uh, you can say, a nursery for monarch butterflies. So what he would do then? He would catch a female monarch, take her eggs and raise them in his basement through the life cycle. So from egg to caterpillar, then to pupa and then to adult butterfly. So when the adult butterfly would mature, then he would tag that butterfly's wings and let them go. So for several years in the basement, his basement, which was a home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development. So this again can come as a question. So how several years of his basement, it was converted into a home to thousands of monarchs. Now, eventually, he started losing interest in it. So again, this can come as a question of why he started losing interest in tagging the butterflies. So the reason is that because it was a very tedious job. So there was not much result. So this is a why for this question. So of all the butterflies that he had tagged in all those years, only two were recaptured and that two not very far away, just 75 miles from where he lived. So when he was tagging the butterflies all these years, so sirf un mein se do butterflies jo hai, wo kisi ne pakdi aur wo tag jo hai, wapis Dr. Urkhat ke paas aaya. So that was also not very far away, just 75 kilometers from where he lived. So therefore, he started losing interest in it. So let's see what happened after that. So now he was in seventh grade. So when he reached seventh grade, he entered a county science fair. This was the first time that he entered any science fair, but he lost there. So the question is, what lesson does Ebright learn when he does not win anything at the science fair? So he learned a lesson there. So he knew that for the next year's fair, he had to do some real experiment. Now what happened at the fair? Why he lost? Let's read that. So his seventh grade project. Again, this is an important question. So when he had participated in the county science fair for the first time, that is when he was in seventh grade, his entry was slides of frog tissues. So what he had taken in the fair, it was the slides of frog tissues, which he showed under a microscope, but he lost there. So he realized that the winners had tried to do real experiments. So this was the difference. The other participants who were winning, so they were doing some real experiments, not simply make a neat display like he had. So he said that it was really a sad feeling to sit there and not get anything while everybody else had won something. But he did not lose heart. Rather than he prepared himself for the next year. So this is the lesson not to lose heart and to do some real experiment and be ready next year. So now next year, for the next year's fair, he had to do some real experiment. And now he had to choose his subject first. So he chose insect as a subject because that was something he had been doing for past several years. So he had a lot of knowledge about it. Therefore, he wrote to Dr. Arkhart calling for ideas 
and he received many. So Dr. Alcard helped him and sent him back a number of suggestions and ideas. And this led to many prize projects in county and international science fairs. Well, from there now, there was no looking back from him. So why did Ebright wrote to Dr. Alcard after he lost at the county fair? So this I've already discussed. So Richard Ebright learned a valuable lesson for after he lost at the county fair. So he realized that he had to do some real experiments since he had been working on insects, but if butterflies in particular, for the past several years, he wrote to Dr. Urquhart asking for suggestions and ideas. Dr. Urquhart replied back with a stack of suggestions and experiments. Sorry, stack of suggestions for experiments, which kept Richard busy throughout his high school and led to prize projects in county and international science fairs. Now, after this, now, high school years in the U.S. Now, you should know this because otherwise it becomes very confusing. There is junior high and then again there's senior and after senior again he is in junior. So, it's a little confusing. So, let's see. High school years, there are four years and they are named as freshman, sophomore, junior and senior. Now, after high school, now how high school, sorry, starts after eighth grade. After high school, after graduate Ting High School, then Richard took admission in Harvard and again there are four years in Harvard which are again named as freshman, sophomore, junior and senior. So now you should not be confused about that. Now next, question number 10. So what project did he undertake in 8th grade or when did he win a prize for the first time? Now after 7th grade when he had lost, it was in 8th grade that he presented his project and the experiment there and he won for the first time. So Ebright tried to find the cause of a viral disease that kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years. So this was his project in the eighth grade. So he tried to find the cause of viral disease which kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years. Ebright thought that the disease might be carried by a beetle. He tried raising the caterpillar caterpillars in the presence of beetles. He did not get any significant results but presented his trial experiment and this time he won at the science fair. So even though the results they were not satisfactory but he did present it what he was experimenting and since it was a real experiment he did won at the science fair but what position that we don't know but he did win there. Now his next year project. So as I've already told you after eighth grade there is high schools. So this is the first year in high school which is freshman year. So what was his project related to Viceroy and Monarch Butterfly? So there in the next year that is in high school, first year of high school, he took this project. So his project was testing the theory that Viceroy Butterflies copy Monarch. So this was his experiment there. So theory it was based on the fact that Viceroy's they look like Monarchs because Monarchs they don't taste good to birds. Now, this is important. Viceroy's, they look like monarchs or they try to look like monarchs because monarchs, they don't taste good to birds and therefore birds, they don't eat monarchs. Viceroy, on the other hand, do taste good to birds. So, the more they look like monarchs, the less likely they are to become a bird's dinner. So, Viceroy and monarchs. So, you can see how similar they are. Now, Everett's project was to see whether in fact birds, they would eat monarchs. So, now his experiment or his research, his project was to check that whether the birds they would eat monarchs or they will be monarchs. So he found that a starling, so starling is a bird, would not eat ordinary food but it would eat all the monarchs it could get. So this bird starling would not eat ordinary bird food but rather he would eat all the monarchs that she could get. So this project was placed first in zoology division and third overall in the county science fair. So in his first year in high school he got first position in zoology and overall third position in the county science fair. Now this question can be asked in this way also. What position did he achieve in his first year at high school and what was the project. So, this is the same answer. Now, after that, how was the project on the 12 tiny gold spots on Monarch Pupa valuable for the scientific world? What was the common belief about these gold spots? And which project won him first place in the county fair and entry into the International Science and Engineering Fair? Now, what happened? In the first year in high school, he had won 
let's go back and see he had won first position in zoology division and overall third position in county science fair so now next year that means in his sophomore year second year in high school he began his research that led to the discovery of an unknown insect hormone though this second year it becomes very very important so indirectly it also led to his new the new theory on cells of sorry life of cells so his aim for the experiment was that what is the purpose of the 12 tiny gold spots on the monarch pupa now this is again a question that uh, what everybody thought of these gold spots so everybody actually thought and assumed that these spots they were ornamental so these spots were ornamental means ke sajavat ke liye so just these spots they beautify the monarch pupa now Dr Arkad didn't believe it so therefore Epright thought of researching on that so question number 12 and 13 we are answering it together so how his curiosity about 12 gold spots led to a new theory so to find the answer to his curiosity Epright and another excellent science student they began their research so for this research they had to build a device that showed that the spots were producing a hormone necessary for the butterfly's full development so this gold spots these gold spots they were not only for purification they were actually producing a hormone that was necessary for the butterflies full development so this project it won a bright first place in county fair so this you have to remember it was in second year in high school that he got first place in the county fair and since he got first place in the county fair he got entry into the international science and engineering fair Now in this international science and engineering fair he won third place for zoology. He also got a chance to work during the summer at the entomology laboratory of Walter Reed Army Institute and Research of Research. So after he won third place for zoology at the international level he got a chance to work during summer. So during the summer holidays he got a chance to work in a very sophisticated laboratory entomology laboratory of Walter Reed Army Institute in of Research and there he could research for his questions and his curiosity in a better way so as a high school junior so that means third year in high school Richard Ebright continued his advanced experiments on monarch pupa so his experiments he continued with them the same experiment about the hormone from the gold spots then that year his project won first place at the international science fair so he won now first place previously he had won first place in zoology but now first place at in totality at the international science fair and therefore he got another chance to work in the army laboratory during the summer Now, fourteenth question is that which project won him first place for zoology at the international fair? So it is in his senior year he went a step further. He grew cells from a monarch's wing in a culture and showed that the cells would divide and develop into a normal butterfly wing scales only if they were fed the hormone from the gold spots. So this is the experiment or the project that won first place for zoology at the international fair. so he grew cells from the monarch's wings in a culture and then he showed that these cells they would divide and they would develop into a normal butterfly if they were fed on that hormone from the gold spots so this project won him the first place for zoology at international fair and then again he spent the summer after graduation doing further work in the army laboratory and at the laboratory of us department of agriculture so after graduation means after his senior year so he again went uh, to spend his summer at the laboratory so now after graduating from school he got admission into harvard so after his freshman year that is first year at harvard in the summer he again went back to the laboratory and he did more work on the hormone of from the gold spots so during or using sorry the laboratory sophisticated instruments he was able to identify the hormones chemical structure so this is again important this is after the first year in harvard he was able to identify the hormones chemical structure and how he was able to identify because he worked in the sophisticated in the laboratory the sophisticated instruments he used them and he was able to identify the hormones chemical 
structure. And a year and a half later after that, so that is during his junior year, that means third year at Harvard, Ebright, he got an idea for his new theory about cell life. Now, how this idea came? This idea actually came when he was looking at the x-ray photos of the chemical structure of the hormone, sorry, of the hormone. So since he was able to identify that hormone's chemical structure, so one day he was looking at the x-ray photos of that chemical structure of the hormone and he got an idea about his new theory about cell life. Now, what is the idea and what is the theory that we'll just do? So when he saw those photos, he believed that along with the findings about the insect hormones, the photos gave him an answer to one of the biology's puzzles, how the cell can read the blueprint of its DNA. So this is the chance, you can say, discovery. So how the cell can read the blueprint of its DNA. So he felt that he will be able to answer this question. So Ebright's research on hormone from the gold spots on monarch pupil led to a new theory discussed. So this is the new theory. So Ebright and his college roommate James R. Wong worked all night drawing the pictures and constructing plastic models of molecules to show how it could happen. So together they later wrote the paper that explained the theory. So, Jo humne chapter ke starting me kiya. This is the explanation for that. So, dono ne milke sari raat kaam kiya. They drew pictures, they constructed plastic models to show that how it could happen. And after that, they explained all that in the form of an article. And that article, it was published in that scientific journal. So in his, let's answer the question now. So in his second year in high school, his research on monarch butterflies led to the discovery of an unknown insect harm. He continued his work on the hormone and showed that the spots they were producing a hormone necessary for the butterfly's full development. Later, after the freshman year at Harvard, he did more work on the hormone and was able to identify hormone's chemical structure. So pehle usse hormone pakta pata chala ek insect hormone ka. Then, उसे ये पता चला कि वो हार्मोन क्यों इंपॉर्टेंट है बिकॉज दैट हार्मोन इट वाज नेसेसरी फॉर द बटरफ्लाईज फुल डेवलपमेंट फिर उसने उस हार्मोन पे और काम किया और उसने उस हार्मोन का केमिकल स्ट्रक्चर पता लगा लिया सो लेटर ऑन उसके जूनियर ईयर में वाइल्ड ही वाज लुकिंग एट द एक्स्ट्रा फोटोज ऑफ द केमिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दैट हार्मोन सो उसे एकदम से ध्यान आया दैट अलोंग विद हिज फाइंडिंग्स अबाउट द इंसेक्ट हार्मोन्स ही हैज गॉट देन आंसर to one of the biology's puzzles. Or wo kya hai? How the cell can read the blueprint of its DNA. So, ab wo iske upar kaam karna shuru karega. <coughs> now, by this time, Richard Ebright graduated from Harvard. So, ye saare experiments or research karne mein usse itne saal lage. That means, char saal mein, he was able to find out that with the chemical structure of that hormone, he got an answer to the to the question that how cells work. So now what happened? He graduated from Harvard with highest honors, second in his class of 1510. And upright, then he went on to become a graduate student researcher at Harvard Medical School. And there he continued to experiment and to test his theory. Now the theory, if the theory proves correct, this is again an important question. Why was there a need to test? test the theory. So if the theory proved correct, it will be a big step towards understanding the processes of life. It might also lead to new ideas for preventing some types of cancer and other diseases. So that is why this theory would be very, very important. Now all of this, it was possible because of Ebright scientific curiosity. His high school research into the purpose of spots on a monarch pupa eventually led him to led him to his theory about cell life. So this is important. His research and his experiments, they started with the question that what are those 12 gold spots on monarch pupa? So that experiment, that research eventually led him to find out or to deduce the theory about cell life. So this is very important. Now, 18th question, what were his other interests that shaped his personalities? Now, till now, we have just read about his scientific approach. But now, we will also talk about his other interests. So, Richard, he was interested in science that we come to know about uh, right now. 
So he was interested in science since his childhood. He had begun collecting butterflies in kindergarten. So this also we have read, but still science did not occupy all of his time. So halaki wo itna sab kaam kar raha tha, but still he had time to do other things. So what were those other things? In high school, Richard F. Wright was a straight A student because learning was easy. So he turned a lot of his energy towards debating and moral United Nations club. Now, because wo ek straight A student, that means he was in top grades always. So learning jo hai, wo hai, badi asaan thi uske liye. So since learning wo bahut jaldi kar leta tha, that means uske baas enough time hota tha or activities ko dene ke liye. So that is why he took to or participated in deba the debating and model United Nations clubs. So Ebright, he became a champion public speaker, a good canoeist, and all-round outdoors person. He is also an expert photographer, particularly of nature and scientific exhibits. So these are his various interests. Now, role of a social touch teacher, Richard A. Bearer, or what were his views about Ebright? So this is now the teacher, the teacher who guided and encouraged him in school. So Richard Bearer, social studies teacher of Ebright, acted as his guide during his school days. He encouraged and advised him to join the debating and moral United Nations club. So actually these clubs Richard joined because of the social studies teacher. So he was always pleased to see him putting in all the hard work and managing three or four hours at night doing debate research besides doing all his research with butterflies and his other interests. So the social study teacher was very pleased and also the teacher was amazed to see him putting all the hard work. So he would do debate research work also along with the regular research on butterflies that he was doing. Now according to him, Ebright was competitive in high school but not in the bad sense. So he was competitive but he was not competitive in bad sense. He was never jealous actually of others. So he was never interested in winning for winning's sake or winning to get a prize. Rather, he was winning because he wanted to do the best job he could. So why he was winning prizes now? Because all his focus, it was on doing the job in the best way, not on winning the prize. So for the right reasons, he wanted to be the best. Now, what were Ebright's views about the teacher? So, even Ebright admired Mr. Bearer for his guidance. And according to Ebright, Mr. Bearer had opened his new, sorry, his mind to new ideas. Ebright called him the perfect person for him at that time. So, 20th question. This is the last question. So, what are the ingredients that go into the making of a scientist? Again, an important question. So according to the author, the ingredients are to start a first-rate mind at curiosity and mix in the will to win for the right reasons. So first-rate mind, then add curiosity to it, and then mix in will, willpower or determination to win for the right reason. So these are the key ingredients that go into making of a scientist. Now Ebright has all these qualities. Now why present time tense? Because Ebright is still living. So Ebright has all these qualities from the time the book the travels of Monarch X opened the world of science to him. Richard Ebright has never lost his scientific curiosity. Now, another question can come that what are the other values that are required to become a successful scientist like Ebright? So, along with these three, you will be writing a few more. So, besides the essential or the key ingredients like first rate mind, curiosity with the will to win, required to become a scientist, one should be devoted, determined and diligent. So one should persevere and not lose heart until the desired result is achieved. One should always aim to be the best, but in a good way, and win, not for winning's sake, but for the right reasons. So these are the other values that one must possess if one wants to become like Ebright. So first three, the other key ingredients, first rate mind, curiosity, and the will to win required to become a scientist. Now next is first rate mind. What is the meaning of first rate mind? So first rate mind actually means exceptional or outstanding mind. That is very intelligent, exceptionally intelligent mind. Now this is fact and opinion question for you. So pick the option that correctly classifies fact and opinions given below. So you take your time, you read it and then I'll be solving it.
I'm reading the first part, the first statement. As a child, Ebright had an intrinsic desire to learn. Second one says, if I am not wrong, the book, The Travels of Monarch X, proved to be a turning point in his scientific journey. Third is, I feel the most inspiring thing for me about Ebright is not to perform or work hard to win a prize or for winning's sake, but to do the best job. And the fourth statement, I think Ebright's mother played an important role in shaping his personality. So let's see. We have to correctly identify which ones are the facts and which ones are the opinions. So now I'm going to solve it. Let's do it. I hope that you've already found your answer. So first, let's read the first one again. So as a child, Ebright had an intrinsic desire to learn. So he had an intrinsic desire to learn. So that and his mother actually said that he wanted to learn. He was curious. So this is a fact. Sorry, this line, I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to put here F. So this is a fact. Second, if I'm not wrong, the book, The Travels of Monarch X, proved to be a turning point in his scientific journey. Yes, this is again a fact. This is correct. The next one, I feel the most inspiring thing for me about Ebright is not to perform or work hard to win a prize or for winning's sake, but to do the best job. Now, although the statement it is correct that Ebright, the author said that Ebright, sorry, it's not Ebright, the author, it is the social science teacher who talked about Ebright saying that he had the desire to win, but for the not for the bad reasons. He actually wanted to win, but he wanted to win to do after doing the best job. Now, this person says that I feel the most inspiring thing for me about it, right? Now, when it is for me, it becomes an opinion because maybe others find something else that is inspiring in a story, but this person, he finds this one as most imp uh, sorry more inspiring so this is an opinion the next one i think ebright's mother played an important role in shaping his overall personality again this is a fact so we do have evidence in the chapter for this so that is the answer we have one two four as facts and three as opinion and let's match now with the options that are given so one two three facts so this is not the correct option one two four and then three as opinion so this is the correct answer so that's all for today i hope that you'll be able to revise this chapter quickly with me you can check this playlist for other videos so that your time is not wasted and you know what you want to know before your exams just enough for your exams so happy preparation and I'll see you with another chapter in a few days. Happy preparation to all of you.